Well, yes, everybody's here. It's business as usual. The pumps seem to be still acting up, but less than before, so that's good news. We're all hard at work, but my wife is too busy to worry about any facial protection. Thankfully, the kids are there to remind her of it and to call for well-deserved breaks on time. This is, of course, a continuation from the previous episodes where we were already deep into the work. Unfortunately, today the weather isn't on our side, as you will soon see. But for now, the missus takes the helm of the hydroblaster. Are you ready? And off she goes. The galley hatch has always shown his flaws, but now it finally gave under the pressure of the hydroblaster. We need to address this urgently to achieve our goal of a watertight boat. At least from above for now. But let's focus on something else for now. I've invested in a Terco rotating disc. Many viewers recommended it. We finally reached the part of the boat where I think the disc is suitable. And I'm using it with an appropriate vacuum hood and spacer, running the machine at 3000 rpm. The result is as expected, a pitted steel surface, possibly comparable to a very coarse sandblasted finish. However, I'm not entirely positive about the experience. Maybe I'm not using it correctly. Is the pressure off or the angle wrong? Even without the vacuum hood, the speed and efficiency were disappointing. Perhaps my expectations were too high. Is this the actual speed at which it should work? I'm not sure. Once again, the disc runs in the right direction and the pressure should be correct given the spacer. To my feeling, it's painstakingly slow. Next time I'll use a timer and provide an exact time progress ratio. Given the price of the disc though, I'm quite disappointed. Hey, is everybody still having fun? The missus continues unfazed and the kids are on the roof. Don't know what they're doing, but my daughter ensures a perfect sand supply for the hydroblaster while I start welding shut the newly discovered holes. And that's the end of another day. Tomorrow we'll tackle the rest. We've cleared about 65% of the rusty patches that had grown on the steel deck. Clearly visible where we've worked, right? But tomorrow is another day. The next day was more of the same, but as you'll quickly notice, the weather wasn't kind to us. Threatening clouds gathered over our boat and we just hope we could stay dry.
unstoppable sanding machine had settled in the master cabin by now, continuing to sand. So engrossed in our task that the kids had the reminder once again of the necessary safety precautions. Well then you're better off working in the open air, right? She remained unstoppable, even when a downpour drenched the boat. And that's what I call dedication. shower the kids occupied themselves quietly indoors but soon the skies cleared for us and I could resume my welding the women managed the water damage and my son removed the lost stubborn rust patches with a needle gun Et voilà, almost ready for the magic. A little bit more brushing, vacuuming, and then a quick run with an air gun, and we can start the highlight of our day, and that is applying the rust converter. It may not seem like much for now, but when I show you the time lapse, the transformation will blow your mind. particles or iron oxide are converted by the phosphoric acid into iron phosphate which is much more resistant to oxidation and forms a perfect solid base for painting. I know I promised you the final result in this episode, but I'm going to keep you in a suspense for another week. I'm sorry. See you all next week, my friends. Thank you, boy. Yeah.